Thank you. Uh, welcome. So, um, you, John. You, you got growth here, but we've got an uncertain macroeconomic environment. And when I think of you guys, I think of you as being an important part of the pipeline uh, of things getting made, things getting built. What are the signals telling you about the rate at which things are getting made or built and digitization? Uh, how much turbulence is there? Yeah, see, that's a great point, John, because people aren't reacting to the quarterly results. They're, they're reacting to the resiliency of our business and what it might signal to the broader kind of health and long-term strength of our business. And you know what we were seeing, and I think it's a big part of, of the reactions you're seeing, is that the monthly active usage of our products, which is a real big indicator of forward-looking activity and all the things associated with that, continued to grow through the quarter. There was a little bit of pullback as the invasion of Ukraine uh, happened in Europe, and that pullback was kind of uh, contained within Europe. But then the monthly active usage continued to grow, and the business continued to kind of renew at really high, really strong rates. So what you saw was a lot of people using our products, a lot of people renewing our products in anticipation of future work, and a lot of people kind of tooling up to do work. And that's what people are reacting to, that resiliency and that kind of forward look. But tell me to what degree do the labor shortages, right, the people to design and build these things, the, the component parts, raw material shortages that keep the things from being built, at a certain point, do those continue to slow down spending on those very services, that very software that enables that process? I mean, I imagine you've had a, a while to deal with that. But, you know, to the extent that that war continues, other factors, inflation continues, yeah. uh, how much does that hit your business? Yeah, John, the number one thing we're hearing from our customers, and, you know, obviously you're, you're reflecting this, is that they're having trouble hiring people, all right? And they're, they're also struggling with the time in which it takes to get things delivered on site, whether they're manufacturing something or whether they're building something, a building a building at a construction site. However, what they also have is a very large backlog of business. So while they have some upfront delivery challenges with regards to delivering the, the building, delivering the product, labor shortages getting in the way of some of those things, uh, material to pipelines getting in the way. They still have a large backlog of business. And that's, that's kind of what's driving the, the usage of our products. Yes, all those things you're talking about are constrained, but right now we're not seeing it translating into a slowdown in people using our products and trying to get things built. Quite the contrary, people have a pretty large backlog of business. Hey, Andrew, is there a way to quantify the mix between uh, the way in which your product's being used for new construction versus a remodel, for example? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You know, I can't tell you exactly what, the, what that mix is, but there is, a, there is absolutely a, a, a balance here between new construction and people reconfiguring existing space. There is a lot of activity going on around reconfiguring existing space. A lot of architecture firms are, are going to have a large backlog associated with reconfiguring existing spaces versus also building new spaces. However, remember, there's lots of investment in infrastructure trickling into the ecosystem right now. And you saw that in some of our Q1 results where some of our biggest customers are investing in things like water solutions to get ready for water infrastructure work coming forward in the future which is another avenue yeah. that's going on out there. Yeah, we forget, we, we do have that, uh, that in the pipe now. I wonder, um, we talked a little bit about extended reality, uh, augmented reality, and the ability to envision a new space using some of these new technologies. Are, are customers beginning to demand that? And how much of an investment is that gonna be in the years ahead? Customers are demand, beginning to hope for it, all right? That it's, it's not so much becoming a, a demand is because the hardware is still catching up to what our customers need to do on the work site. However, customers are exploring in lots of interesting ways how to use this stuff to deliver a project more effectively, make sure that what is spec actually gets built. So look for us to integrate more and more of this capability into our technology moving forward as the hardware matures and as the customer demand environment starts to mature because they're actually getting real ROI from these things. All right, taking the long view, uh, we appreciate it. Andrew Anagnos, the CEO of Autodesk.